Welcome back to Pro Night. This is Riven Team TV's Dorjan. And I'm High Flyer 15. And today we're following the clan, sorry, the, 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 the clan Game of Thrones. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sue me. <laughs> <laughs> the gathering of tanks. <laughs> In their tier 8 tank company battle. So far we've seen them adjust their strategy and work with uh, the tank limitations that they've chosen. Yeah. We've seen some great artillery strikes, some uh, poor choices, some good choices, some interesting enemies. So if you missed part one, please go back to it. In part two, we're going to do a couple more battles. Two, three, depends on how long they are, and give our commentary on them and how they're improving. And yeah, any more things to talk about? I think we do. The ESL this Sunday, High Flyer? Yeah, there's an... <clears throat> tournament we're going to be casting this Sunday, and it is Sunday at um, it was five o'clock. Five uh, Central Europe, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, that's the uh, go for World of Tanks Cup number seventy-five, and it's seven was seven tier eight maximum, and yeah, Sunday, five o'clock, you better be there. Indeed. Uh, make sure you sign yourself up if you've got a team and you're thinking of uh, trying to get into the competitive scene even slightly. If you get in the top 64 tanks, you start winning gold. So, team, sorry. So there's a really big win pool and win chance. So even if you're not particularly talented and you just want to get better or see how you do, then by all means, go for it. Uh, there's nothing to lose. Again, there's no entry fees and there's actually cash prizes to be won if you go ahead and get far enough so go ahead do it yeah why not only fun to be had and gold to be won and cash yes of course well um, team lineups because their team is very special we're up against uh, R-O-L and uh, it's gold, they, yeah, gold <laughs> ro roll gold. it's gold gold the team is gold is it gold T-34 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 oh. Luvi <laughs> Don't make me think, Dorjan. <laughs> yeah, they've chosen one IS-3, and uh, on this map, I think that's a very, oh, it's very unlucky uh, map pool roll, or <laughs> because um, they really need fast tanks, especially when they're up against five IS-3s. Um, they basically have a, a defensive team right now, and with three artilleries and no scouts. I don't see that being a very successful combination. Yeah, uh, let's look at the T50 again, Highflyer. Can you follow him for a minute? I just got to yep. uh, do something. Boop. And he's rolling around behind the um, the allies again. Mm, I think he's just trying to 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 keep his motor running and see when he can pop through the uh, the enemy uh, defense. Um, but other than that, I have really no idea what he's doing. He could. Um, I don't know if he's he's been playing this map uh, before or seen our newbie um, Monday with that uh, map tactic uh, or saw it on the stream because my mic was so horrible at the... Uh, oh, I think we have to, to redo that one, but um, he could have gone um, straight north and um, and gone into the mountains and he could have been spotting... Oh, they're pushing down through the city. Yeah, they're actually no pushing sight hard. there. He would have seen that if he was actually doing his job a bit better. Yeah. The T-50 has kind of... I, I would have to say he's let the team down. I, I cannot figure out what he was doing. No, he's been scouting the exact same tanks that the tanks up north has been able to see because of the 50 meter rule. He, he didn't really go over the top to spot them. He just... he's been rolling around. Um, he could do better, uh, to say the least. Well, this is a good move from, from uh, Dyson got, unfortunately, he was a bit too far forward, so he was taken out. But great reaction by Fitzgerald. He saw the enemy was pushing through, immediately turned, right and, uh, turned tail and ran. He was like, sod that. If I stay here to even take another shot, I'm dead. He moves. That was a great decision making from him. However, this is a rush from their base. I doubt they're going to do anything but cap now. Yep, they've already moved into the cap. And uh, one thing to, no to notice, um, the... Uh, the the gathering, gathering of tanks, um, they're not super good at, uh, at focus firing, that's uh, maybe something they should uh, work a little bit on, because most of their the enemy tanks have lost health, but only one of them has died so far, while they've pushed all the way to their base, so uh, that could have been a little bit better. 
Well, they might be able to put off the defense. One thing about the cap circle is that you're in the open. So we'll see what they decide to do. Although Donopos is going out into the open himself when he had cover there. Yeah. I guess he's trying to get point blank range with them. No, he's driving behind them. Okay, cool. Yeah. And the enemy are actually ignoring him. So he's getting some good shots off. Yeah, but he keeps driving around. He should have stayed behind them <laughs> where he, uh, he could have. Uh, okay, he's getting the wreck between him and the... No, he, that's not what he's doing. Um, okay, he's I'm actually thinking... lucking out quite yeah, well. I'm Although his handling to... of his armor has been very good. He's actually been... Oh, it was okay. I was just about to compliment for something that was actually fluke. He's put yeah, his sides it... at the enemy and now he's getting hit. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, about anything positive. Uh, because when he, when he started to do something that was good, then he immediately backed off from the, the, the wreck, which was the... Um, the cover for the uh, from the T34 and the, and now he's not even driving behind the dead Rex and he got hit Do you know what? again. They so actually yeah. gain from incompetence enemies rather than um, well played themselves. I mean, they yeah. did decently. They obviously defended well, managed to clear them out. But if Don Oposman did that against any decent team, he would have been three shotted. It would have yeah. been any team would, would have turned around, bang, 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 and he would have been gone. Yeah. But they ignored him. And he survived. What a badass. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a badass. Watch out. Well, if it works, you're a badass. If you don't, of course. Rule, so. <laughs> yep. oh, yeah. Um, and meanwhile, the T-50 has been doing his job. Going down in the enemy uh, base, taking out an artillery. And um, I don't think it was the AMX 1350. Oh, 90. So uh, I'm guessing it was, <laughs> it was artillery. We nearly got shot. Uh, yes. But I don't know why he's running away from the artillery. Keep them lit up. Come on, dude. Yeah, their T-50 driver is probably new. We'll have to look up at his stats and uh, see how much experience he's got. He needs a bit of training. He might not be a normal scout driver, and they just got him uh, on scout today. But uh, yeah, um, apart from the T-50's um, unusual driving habits, the rest of the team reacted well, and this is the key to winning games where enemies do odd strategies like that push through the middle just straight to the cap circle and try and cap that's an odd strategy because of what it does if they were just cleaning out the artillery and then got into position and defended from the enemy's team place that would have been a better strategy but they didn't they try to cap which is a very vooby thing to do um uh, by vooby i mean permanent noob a veteran noob so it's like you don't do that if you clear out the cap circle to kill the artillery go for it cool then move on but they didn't do that, so... Mm. Yeah, they could have had an advantage going into the base, but not capping, because the hill down there would have prevented the... Um, or would have forced the um, the gathering of tanks to push around the hill, and then the uh, enemy artillery would have had free range to hit them. But they decided to cap, and um, yeah, that's what happened. T-50, damage upon spotting, 100. Ugh. Yeah, so... He drove around nearly five kilometers and spotted two, three, no, three tanks. And then not so much. Right, yeah. let's have a look at this. Let's, let's, have, let's have a look at this T50 driver, see how much he's been playing. Yeah, see, T50 isn't even his top tank list. It is 182 battles played. He's, I mean, he's got a decent win percentage with it. I mean, he's won a lot today. He's won a lot today, so he's obviously getting carried by his teams a little, we have to say that. But 182 battles is almost nothing. I believe even I've got more in my T50 than that. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not. It's not like my service record. But, um, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing that you would expect to see someone driving a scout in a tank company battle to have more games than that played, at least compared to his other tanks. So clearly he's suffering a little with inexperience. Let's say that. Yeah. Right, uh, uh, to take this opportunity while they're getting ready for the next game, we are trying to um, uh, see what we can do with Riveting TV. We are, High Flyer and myself are sticking to World of Tanks, don't you worry. But there are other games that want to be covered, and we have other people who want to join our crew to do other games. Are there any other games like XCOM? That you, the, the one that's just been released, that you would like to see? If so, make a noise in the chat that you would like to see these sort of um, games being covered. And we'll get a second channel set up where they will be covered by um, some of our friends that want to start getting into casting. We, we can't guarantee these shows will appear or not, but definitely want to see if there's an interest here with our current uh, audience. Otherwise, we won't bother with you again. Yes. And also, yeah. 
any feedback for tonight, you know where we are. Uh, the channel here, rivetingtv at gmail.com. We always want to hear you. And I almost forgot how stupid of me. One of our viewers, who has been a big fan of High Flyers um, Word of Tanks tips and our newbie Monday, has offered two gold tanks to any newbies next Monday. So join oh our cast God. next Monday. He's offering two gold tanks to some newbies. So if you are a newbie and you want to turn up on Newbie Monday for your chance to win a gold tank, it's very generous of him. And I couldn't thank him enough, but he said it's, it's, he wants to give back what we gave to him. So we feel absolutely honored for that. And we really, really can stress this enough. Turn up on Monday, take part. And if you're new, he's wanting to help you out by getting you a gold tank, which gives you extra credits and is cheaper to repair. You know, thus you get more profit and also you can train some crew in it so it's all good we'll teach you about gold tanks uh, during the newbie monday i think i'm gonna turn up i'm gonna win that <laughs> <laughs> no you should definitely turn up as always it's fun you learn and you're surrounded by wonderful people each and every time and uh, right now we're actually on uh, an assault map uh, one that I haven't played very often because it's the Siegfried Lion Assault where you get to have the entire city and the enemy has to push in through open fields from every single direction. So it's about spreading out your tanks, spawning the enemy and reacting to what they're doing. Yeah, the T-50 is actually doing his job correctly this time. He's uh, going across the field, uh, sorry, to the top of the hills, seeing if there's enemy tanks coming and then ducking away again. He's doing it a lot better this time. I'm sure his teammates are giving him feedback and he's as he's learning how to be there. The interesting one is the IS-3 in the northern position. Why is he there? Hmm. I really don't have any idea. Okay, explain to the viewers why it's a bad place. <laughs> and he's yelling for help. Um, it's a bad place because you're totally in the open. Uh, artillery can get you. Uh, you're easily surrounded when you're... Um, if you look at his team, there are hills. Um, I'm looking at the hills right now. His, enemy, his team cannot help him whatsoever. But luckily, um, someone did hit that Tiger too, so he was able to take it out. But still, this is a very, very, very bad position to be in. And if the Tiger II knew what he was he was doing, he would have charged that IS-3 because the Tiger II, German tanks in particular, are very heavy. So they will do, I think it's three times the amount of damage going down yeah, and ramming. He would have done a ton it. of damage. Yep. I mean, the, the trouble is here, guys, as well, you, you're watching this, he won the duel. He killed two tanks. Thus, it must have been a good position. The trouble with that is if any significant force came to the south, he wouldn't have, he, it would have taken him a long time to get back to the base. If he was surrounded by two more competent tanks who just charged him, he would have been completely on his own, and our artillery wouldn't have been able to support him because he would have, the enemy would have been too close to him, and so on and so forth. Now, it's not a bad position for a scout. If there was a scout in that position who was waiting for the enemy to come over and then just running away, that would have been much better use of their manpower. But it's working out for them, so, you know... They're not against a team that's done particularly well. I'm guessing there are a bit odds and sods. It's uh, HP BBP with Mercs, and I've never heard of them. So yeah, we've switched to uh, Thunderpose, uh, who is uh, fighting against two of the Type series tanks, and he's been surrounded for I think it's two minutes now, and they haven't really done any damage to him, and he's been able to take them out almost single-handedly before two of his teammates showed up now. Impressive, actually, <laughs> that the uh, the type series uh, didn't really do anything. They didn't even get him down below half health. He has 13, uh, 35 uh, <laughs> HP more than half. So that was Why nice. is that TD there? I'm curious. Mm, TDs are support fire, and if the team die, then. But what angle is he getting support? there? Uh, I don't get the position None. for his None. team. Because if he came down to the south, surely that would have given him the team more support. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sure. Maybe he was acting as T TD support for the the artillery. If a, a fast scout should have ran out there, but he kept. Yeah, not there. with just one AMX 19, one T50. They've not lost a single tank, by the way. It's a bit of a walkover. And no. unfortunately, there's not much commentary you can give on a match where it's such one sided. Um, uh, the gathering of tanks guys are playing decently, very solid play, uh, good teamwork. There's obviously, as we've pointed out, just a few smaller mistakes, but the enemy were trash. 
Uh, no offense, you guys. You're you you're not working all that well together. Your tank choices were meh. So, you know, we d we can't expect any more than that. So, yeah, we'll wait for the next game. <laughs> There's not much we can say about that. What tanks yeah. do you think we would see from a proper lineup? Like, if we, let's let's say we verse Odin Mortis next. What sort of tanks do you expect to see in the ninety point mm, lineup? Should I guess or just remember what they played with? <laughs> um, but the the, um, the the most optimal team, as we've seen plenty of time by Odo Mortis, is having two uh, quick damage dealer in the uh, Amex 5100 IS-3s. If you've got to have a medium tank, take a Pershing, and uh, then two Amex 1390s, and a scout, or use them as a scout. If you need... Uh, a scout instead of taking a lot of artillery for the rest of the points then have a T50-2 um, but other than that um, the, the AMX 1390s would would suffice for uh, for scouting jobs and then artillery for the rest of the money because of the um, yeah, we've discussed this already but the IS-3 uh, being the assault tank Automotors likes to get into position and be the assaulters assaulters the ones assaulting, even um, when it's on a defensive map, they don't ping on the uh, the small uh, circle around the cap zone. You gotta go sit here by the rock and just wait for them. No, it's get to that mountain now. If you see the enemy, push a little bit to the left so they, they you get the mountain between you and the enemy. But you gotta get to that mountain. If you don't get there, then don't go at all. And uh, then why are you playing? And um, yeah, um, fast French right tanks yeah. because of the. Uh, Ready up, um, <laughs> because, because of the uh, Don der Pose. Okay, Don der Pose. Okay, P -p -p Pose. You gotta pronounce that next time. Um, but yeah, uh, big damage dealers in the French. Fast assault tanks, but uh, through the uh, the IS threes, no uh, excessive <laughs> um, Tiger twos, KB fours, Leuve tanks, or as we see here, T-34s, because it's just too slow. The turret is the only thing that's that's tough to penetrate, but if you surround it, it's dead meat because of the, the reload time. And uh, yeah, that's the that's the optimal team. Do you have anything to say to that? No, you basically got it. Yes. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, so well, yeah, we're yeah. going to start our probably final battle of the night, guys. Uh, we're against 9TD with a pretty similar lineup, I would say. They've, they've obviously had a few people drop out and a few new guys drop on to the um, uh, Gathering of Tanks, guys. But three artillery is, a, is heavy artillery support. Again, no scouts, but a Type 59. I don't, I don't see the favor of taking a Type 59 over a scout. They keep doing it. For a Type 59, you could have two, two T-50s. With a three artillery lineup, why are you going for a Type 59 instead of two T50s? I have no idea. It's a very weird decision. <clears throat> it's a very weird decision because it's not fast. It doesn't do a lot of damage. The penetration is poop, and well, everybody knows where to penetrate it now. It's not overpowered as it used to be when people didn't know where to penetrate. But now it's just dead meat, no matter what you you meet, unless it's tier six. Yeah. Ah, right, so let's see what they do here. Um, oh, voting! Yeah, guys, voting! Uh, who do you think is going to win, guys? Uh, the Gathering of Tanks uh, or the 9TD guys? Both reasonably solid lineups, apart from T um, 9TD don't have any scouts. So I would put the lineup advantage to Gathering of Tanks. So it's up to you guys who you think is going to win. And points we mean prizes eventually when we get sorted out. I'll take this time during the lull to say that um, you guys should check out worldofwar.net. On there we have news and opinions about World of Tanks plus other things tanky related that uh, we think you're interested in. Soon the forum is going to be turned into a riveting TV forum. So anything you want to talk about there outside of the shows, uh, you can go there to find out. Below the video here now is our calendar. You can see what we've got lined up for you um, in the coming weeks and months. Sometimes we put that far ahead, but unlikely. Uh, always at least next week. And yeah, we're now seeing a very interesting split. Two guys on the hill at B9. Do you think they're just trying to be clever? 
Yeah, they, I think they tried to be clever, but they just let two of their Tiger twos just die pointedly. Because the enemy saw that there were no other enemies up there and they just pushed hard against the not very good uh, defensive tanks when it comes to brawling like the IS-3s are. Yeah, if you notice, um, if you could focus on Red Jezer, um, he is thinking he's holed down, but he wasn't, and he got hit right in the front. The trouble with these sort of mountains at the top here, A, it takes you a long time to get up there, B, it takes you a long time to redirect once you are there, and C, it's very hard to get yourself holed down there. And look at that, the AMX 1390 has just flanked them into the back. I don't think he's noticed yet, actually. Or he's um, actually ignoring it. He might be ignoring it, which is actually quite sensible at this point. Yeah, but the AMX-90 is... Um, oh, he just set him on fire. Okay, I was just about to say that he he was... Um, stupidly? Yeah, not very uh, clever. He was splitting his uh, damage all over the tank, but he could have killed... Um, Rijizer. And... Um, yeah, it's, it would have been... Uh, minus one tank to a uh, gathering of tanks, but nope, still alive. Well, if we zoom in on uh, Gunner Dola trying to defend the camp circle, he's doing the sensible thing of not getting himself killed. Although doing some damage, he's mainly lighting them up so his teammates can reset the cap points occasionally. Although he's done some serious damage to that Tiger too. Yeah. I think he's done all that damage, actually. Uh, oh, the light mm -hmm. tank, he's got through the line. The AMX-90 uh, has got direct fired. No, he was taken out by T-32. Where was that T-32? No, he got a GW. Oh, he did, um, did he? Yeah, it was the MX-90 that took out. Oh, yeah, so I still got the MX-90 side. So yeah, okay. Yeah, um, let's see if Robert is going to be killed as well. It's yeah. High. Right, so why are they in this disadvantage? Well, my first thoughts is positioning. Yep. They were two guys in the mountains, two Tiger Twos forward, and they've been a mess all over the place, really. If there's a lesson to learn from this, what would you say, High Flyer? Don't try to be fancy just because the new physics allowed you to go to different places. Stick to what you know, um, especially for the uh, T-32s. They thought that they were hull down, but they weren't. And you, you really have to get into the, to the maps, uh, either with a clan or just a few friends. And go to, to the different mountains, zoom out, and if you can't see your own hull, then you know that the enemy can't see your own hull because that's what the enemy sees as well. Um, so yeah, positioning was was the poor choice here. The T-32s, especially um, the Tiger twos, were in the in the perfect position, but the 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 missing missing uh, T-32s really um, hurt them here. Mm -hmm. If the Tigers were back um, in the base, there was no reason to be that far forward. You had the cap circle in the south to defend, so the Tiger 2 should have been in the base defending, and everyone else should have gone to defend the cap circle. And the scouts should have gone forward to see the enemy's positions. Once the enemy were spotted, you can then redirect your forces to go to the right places. So there were several things wrong there, I think. The one, they moved out too quickly without relying on their scouts to find the information. Two, they were being too fancy and they they spread their line out way too thin and put themselves where they couldn't support each other. So I think that's really the main reasons we can say that they uh, lost. Yeah, indeed. Uh, that, that really was the, um, the main point in this battle. And it was the turning point as well because the enemy went from being um, behind the hill to just, oh, there's just two tanks, steamroll them, and it, it, it actually looked like they didn't really care about the T-32s because they were just in the hill playing around with the AMX 1390, so, um, yeah. Do we have time for one more high flyer? Yes, we, I think we could. Okay. And it's the last game for, for time A alone. <clears throat> So yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. Shout me my pineapples if you're having a good time. I see no bananas from bad lag today, so it uh, seems like everything's going well today. Yes. How many battles does it normally take to take people to pass the stage of newbiness? That's a good question, actually. We should. It's the sort of thing we normally answer on uh, our other days, but there's no reason why not today. There isn't any. You don't need a certain amount of battles to pass newbiness. You just need to get experience in what you do. 
Now, it does take battles, but I'm not going to say how many because everybody is very different. But for one tank or one class of tank, like a light tank or scouting, I'd rather say. Because I, I like to think of things not in heavy tank destroyer, scout, or light, sorry. I don't like to think of them in that way. I like to think of them as assassin and assault, heavy, uh, like heavy support or heavy push, something like that. Because that allows you to actually define the tank as itself rather than as like a class because let's face it the IS-8 is not a heavy tank by classification it is just because it's heavy it's not actually what you consider a heavy tank it doesn't really push um, like that it's a med tank so it's really a flanker support tank it's not a heavy pusher or assault tank so thinking like that will really help you high flyer what how many games if you had to estimate would it take someone to get used to a particular class if you just jump into the game and um, if you don't try to learn from from your your battles and if you if you just go about it yourself and don't seek out help, um, I didn't receive any help uh, when I get got into the game. I even had to learn how to zoom in in a in a normal tank. <laughs> I thought it was artillery exclusive. So uh, having a few tips from the beginning. Um, really helps uh, that's because that's why we have the newbie Monday it's it's small things that that help you uh, increase your your knowledge about the game as a whole and when you got all those little pieces and put them together then that's when you start to play as a as more uh, than a newbie um, but an estimate um, well uh, it depends because the classes, assassin, tank, and all that um, brawler and st stuff like that, it's um, it really takes... If you learn one assault tank, then you can carry that on to the next tank. Mm -hmm. And... Um, uh, well, right, let's continue that afterwards. Yeah, We've yeah, actually a lot of things analyzed in this game so far. We had um, Grower in his IS-3 push too far forward. Gunner Dola, he's the next one, too far forward. What's happening is that the enemy's coming in one by one and just taking them out individually. I understand the formation idea that one will spot them, then the next one will spot them, then the next one will spot them, and, and while they're being spotted, the rest of the team can support them. It doesn't quite work out that way because if your teammates try and pop out to give you support, they're now in the open, they can be easily shot. So all you do is separate yourself. Let's have a look quickly at the, uh, the team lineups. Uh, KWE has an AMX 5100, good. IS3, IS3, T32, Tiger 2, IS3, IS3, T34. Nothing unusual, again, no scouts. So they're using this as a very heavy push tactic. We've actually countered this on Company Tuesdays. You know what to do, guys, don't you? If someone heavy pushes you, you get to, you spread out, you get your team to push in one direction, like avoid them completely and cap them, or you you concentrate firepower to where they are because they're all going to be in the open. There's, there's not enough cover for all that many tanks. Your thoughts, High Flyer? Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, and as you saw, um, even though they, they had a few tanks push um, a little bit too far ahead and lost them, they just kept their... the, the rest of the tanks kept their composure and and didn't, didn't try to push towards um, the enemy because they, they already had spotters up there. You don't really need more spotters than necessary. So um, the excessive, uh, with him being there, being the only one spotting them, that was enough. There was no need to sacrifice more tanks. So the team um, sticking to the back and just firing at the, the tanks, trying to go and get him because they thought he was alone, um, and it worked. Uh, he got the support he needed, and they got killed. And now they're actually winning. <laughs> yeah, now, that's the interesting thing, guys. Um, one thing you've got to learn from people like Odin Mortis, and the reason they got to number one, even if they're kind of losing their crown at the moment, is that even on a win like this, they realize, guys, we lost like four big tanks. That's, that's too many. We've got, to, we've got to make sure we don't in future. And there's plenty they could have done to make them not lose so many tanks. It was still a solid win. At this point, you look at the team, you see the HP levels. Yeah, they, they won this very significantly. But what could they have done to make them lose less tanks? And it was all about the formation and positioning again. And this comes back to learning. <laughs> Sometimes there's nothing you can do against that sort of stuff. Um, it's all about learning the maps. 
and we, we pointed this out over the ESL, where teams that don't quite know the map, and you can tell they don't quite know the map, are at a disadvantage purely by just being out of position, not knowing exactly where to go or how to respond to certain things. So it's about playing the maps, understanding the maps, getting your positions in place, and learning how to respond to what your enemy is doing and find out what they are doing, plus driving your opponents to do things that makes them at a disadvantage. Ugh. Yeah, that was a long one. <laughs> and yeah, so I want to publicly thank the, uh, uh, gathering, the gathering of tanks. of tanks. I keep wanting to say Game of Thrones. I've yeah. been seeing too much advertising for it recently. I see GOT, <laughs> I think, Game of Thrones. The gathering of tanks, the Netherlands teams that are in the ESL, they, sh they might be even in it this Sunday, I'm not sure. It's an absolute pleasure to have them. They've been good mannered every single game, always saying GG and, and good luck to their opponents. So it's been an absolute pleasure, guys. Um, hopefully see you again soon, even if not in the tournaments, but again on Procast Nights. Hail, join in on the uh, company Tuesdays and uh, maybe drop by on the Mondays to let the newbies know how to do it, okay? So, uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, GOT. Thank you very much, you audience, and we will see you on Sunday. Yes, and what's going on Sunday? ESL. Oh. Tournament. Yes, so. <laughs> yeah, go for World of Tanks, number 75. Plug, plug, plug. So yeah, if you want to hang out with us outside of the cast, if we're not running after parties, which we're, we don't do on uh, Thursday nights, um, if you want to hang out with us outside of these times, please feel free to uh, join us at worldofwar.net, where we're going to soon set up on the forum there. Uh, Hi, Flyer. You had an idea that you were going to do in the morning soon, aren't you? Yes. I am um, free from school this uh, entire next week. And therefore, I have decided to make a Good Morning Tanks show. Um, this will actually be um, going um, after this next week has passed and I've played each and every single morning. It is going to be on every Monday morning because school starts at 1 p.m. so I have plenty of time to play and um, just have fun with people who are up in the morning and don't have jobs until later in the evening or afternoon and uh, yeah just gonna have a good time if people want to platoon they just have to say so in the chat and boop, into the game that's it really that's it Awesome. It's been a great show, actually. Really enjoyed that. Um, it's nice to cast games from that point of view sometimes instead of trying to uh, play at the same time. It's much harder, I think. Yeah. So, see you Sunday, guys. Bye! Bye-bye!